Welcome back, or if you haven't seen the first part, welcome front. In part one, we started looking at this junk Game Boy Pocket. It didn't turn on and the screen had this strange pattern on it. We did eventually get it to work, and if you'd like to see how and what was wrong with it, go ahead and click this I card in the corner. But now, let's go ahead and continue. I didn't know it in the last video, but it turns out this is actually a fairly common problem. I usually try to research as much as I can before making videos, but I think the problem here was I didn't even know what to call this. Turns out, much like Chad Warden, this goes by many different names. Screen rot, screen cancer, which by the way is a poor choice of words for a Google search. Some people just call it dead pixels, which I guess? Usually when I think of dead pixels, it's just like a few in one area, not this spreading virus looking thing. It seems to have a wide variety of potential causes, including physical damage, humidity, temperature, poor manufacturing quality, and even just old age. Earlier in the year, a YouTuber by the name of Hey It's Andy demonstrated that screen rot can seemingly be fixed or at least mitigated by applying strong physical pressure. This is pretty cool and would be great as far as keeping the Game Boy authentic with its original screen, but does seem to require a lot of effort to get it perfect. Even in Andy's video, he admits that there was still a handful of tiny splotches left over at the end. Most people will tell you screen rot is unfixable, and I kind of went into it with that assumption. I'd already bought a brand new backlit IPS screen going into that video just in case, which is why I treated that screen more like an autopsy than a repair. Regardless, after seeing Andy's video, I decided to give it a shot myself. Andy said it took him an hour to get his results, so I knew I was going to be doing this for a while. I put on some JCS criminal psychology and got to work. Amazingly, it didn't take long to start seeing results, especially the thinner strands which disappeared almost immediately. After about 20 minutes, it was looking very different. I was kind of staggered. I'd spent my whole life learning not to poke or stab LCDs, and now I'm mashing Q-tips and screwdriver handles into one, supposedly for its own benefit. Unfortunately, I soon discovered that as one blotch disappeared, another would take its place. I guess this is why it takes so long. I could see that eventually this would probably all clear up or at least get really close, but since I already bought a replacement, which should be better in every way, I decided to just go ahead with installing that instead. The Game Boy is already disassembled with the screen removed from the last video, so it should be a simple installation of the new screen, right? Well, not exactly. The new screen is actually significantly larger than the old one, and doesn't fit in the original case at all. Presumably it's a generic panel already in production that's been adapted to work with the Game Boy screen protocol. So to get it to fit, you actually need to make a number of case modifications, mostly to remove much of the plastic that holds the original screen in place so that the bigger panel can fit. Then you just use basically tape to affix it instead. It's a little bodgy, but I guess that's the price of having niche hardware mods that don't break the bank. I removed the front screen cover. It's often called a lens, even though I'm pretty sure it doesn't have any actual optical properties. It's stuck on with essentially some tape, so removing it is as simple as carefully pushing it out. I don't think this is strictly necessary to remove for this mod, but since we'll be cutting and shaving the case plastic, it'll make it easier to keep everything clean. First I use some cutting pliers to snip off the big chunks, and I have to say, if you're anything like me, you do feel just a little bit guilty doing this. Some mixture of this being an original part from 20 years ago no longer in production, with some sprinkling of fear that you're going to screw it up. Also, it's kind of a collectible and modifying it could easily reduce its value, but I don't think that really matters unless I was planning to sell it, and even then I think screen mods tend to make Game Boys sell for more rather than less. After snipping off the large chunks, I used a chisel edge razor to file it down flat. You can also use a Dremel, which would certainly speed things up, but I don't have one of those, and the razors are fine as long as you're patient and set aside enough time. Eventually the case looked like this. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but it actually looks a lot worse than it feels. It's pretty flat to the touch, and I think the screen should sit pretty flush. Time to try fitting the screen, and it really is huge compared to the original one. So much so I had to keep filing down the edges of these screw holes and the power LED tube. Eventually it slotted in, which meant, as far as I was concerned, the hardest part was over. Yeah, I was really dreading that case modification, but looking back it wasn't so bad. It was almost time to test, but another thing that makes this wildly different from the original screen is that since it has a backlight it requires significantly more power than the original screen was given. So we actually need to solder a wire straight to VCC, the most convenient source of which is the very same switch that was causing so many problems in part 1. Now we can give it a proper test. Oh wow, look at that! Immediately you notice how much easier it is to see with the backlight, but what's really astounding for me is how much clearer and sharper that IPS panel is. I've eaten potato chips less crisp than this. I put the buttons back in so I could start playing, and yeah, already I think this was 100% worth doing. Surprisingly, what I really like about doing this with the Game Boy Pocket is that it has a contrast knob. Usually this knob sucks, but it was a necessary evil with the original screen because it was so susceptible to changes in temperature and battery voltage, so it required frequent manual adjustment but here it's been repurposed to adjust the brightness of the backlight, which is kind of great. 
Later Game Boys ditched the knob since it became unnecessary with better screen technology. For those ones, backlight mods have to use things like touch sensors or have to be soldered to the button so that the user has a way to adjust the brightness. It's better than nothing, but not nearly as convenient as having a dedicated knob. It's really cool that this mod turns what was one of the more irritating parts of the Game Boy Pocket into probably one of the best perks when it comes to backlight mods like this. Another thing I noticed that was less cool was that it shut off a few times while it was on, but this went away once I swapped in some fresh batteries. That is, of course, the primary downside of adding a backlight. Even a modern, efficient LED backlight like this draws a significant amount of power, but it is definitely way better than it would have been in 1996, when the only choice was a power-hungry CCFL backlight. There are, in fact, battery mods that replace the AAAs with a lithium battery that charges off good old USB-C. If you played this on the go a lot, I could definitely see that being worthwhile. But for me, I'm fine with my rechargeable AAAs. Anyways, this mod is almost done, so let's finish it up. As I mentioned before, basically the only way to fix the screen in place is to use adhesive. The screen comes with some shaped, double-sided tape for this purpose, however it strongly cautions that it's designed for permanent mounting, and not to expect to be able to remove it once it's placed. From what I can tell, there's a mounting bracket to help place the screen correctly on the tape, but I didn't seem to get this with my purchase for whatever reason. Maybe it's an optional extra? But as such, I'm left more or less to my own devices as far as getting it aligned right on the permanent tape. I saw that other people in my position opted for less permanent solutions so there wasn't as much pressure to get it right the first time, and eventually I decided to do the same. It may not hold it in place quite as tightly, but will allow us much more room for error as far as aligning the screen goes. Besides, we can always use the permanent stuff later if we feel like it. We can't always downgrade to less permanent stuff. I cut some thin strips of double-sided tape and soon had my screen adhesive in place. Next I decided to also clean the lens. This too wasn't strictly necessary, but felt like a good idea to make sure there wouldn't be any crap stuck between it and the screen. First I removed all the old adhesive. It looked pretty grimy anyway after being here for over 20 years. I used some WD-40, which helped a little, but most of the work was done with alcohol and scrubbing. It took a very long time, but eventually the lens and front bezel were clean. I stuck some more tape down and got ready to put this Game Boy sandwich back together. I got the lens stuck on, the bezel is no longer naked, and now for the centerpiece. The screen actually has a peelable cover on it, so you don't have to worry about dust or fingerprints until the very moment you put it in. Let's all take a moment to enjoy this together. Ah, now that's some good stuff. Now let's get it in quickly before some speck of dust lands on it. Alright, there we go. Seems pretty good so far. Let's put the buttons back on and stick some batteries in and test it out. Oh yeah, that's looking good. Honestly, this just looks amazing. Playing it with an EverDrive to have games you want right at your fingertips, I think this is pretty much the ultimate Game Boy experience. Minus the USB-C battery, I mean, that would be pretty cool, but just to play this is great. So I think it's time to button it up and call it finished. I'm honestly really happy with how this all turned out. This Game Boy has been on a really long journey to get to this point, and as I said before, I think this is now pretty much the ultimate Game Boy experience, at least for these original black and white Game Boy games. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video, I hope you found this as cool as I did, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye guys.